Energy. And welcome to the Grassy Plains. It's been quite a while since I've done the Grassy Plains, actually. As I say, I usually do, I, I always talk up, like, Grassy Plains alternatives. Because <laughs> um, there, there are quite a few of them. And of course, you don't get the absolute pure equality, I, I, what's the word? Fairness, I guess, uh, that you get from the Grassy Plains. But at least it gives us something. But anyway, right. It's been a while, a little while. So we've got the Grassy Plains for a 2v2. We've got MSQ, next time is King Rasta. I actually don't know that name. Either way. Umbar. Umbar and Mordor is a nice little tag team. I really like... Um, I like Umbar in a Siege, but I really do like them in a, in a pitch battle too. Belgar Footman out front, you can't really ask for better than that when it comes to sort of just a nice malicious spear to keep the keep the enemy back. We're at main, you know, we're almost main line spear. By name, the Adunaim Shield Guard, holy smokes. Wow, okay. Adunaim Shield Guard mixed up with the um, Alcrondas Legion is a really interesting. Wow, that is an expensive front line. Belgar Pikes and Sentinels mixed in amongst it too, holy smokes. Um, there's a lot of cost in this. It's not something that I've um, I've ever mixed up, but yeah, holy smokes, this is a a stubborn line to get through. Um, I don't think that those I don't think those Belagar Pikes have received an armor upgrade. I'm pretty sure that when they get an armor upgrade, they all get like this. Um, they remove the symbols, and they just they just go for the pure black. Anyway, for Cav, we've got the Alcrondas Faithful incredible melee cav and then to their side the warlords of umbar some fantastic knights so no archers yeah not a single archer from them okay um cool cool um i think we can probably assume that his, his attack strategy here uh king rasta here he's got his temple inquisitors again some strong melee cavalry to dominate the cav game and over there, I'm seeing some more stuff to dominate the Cav game, but we'll get to that. Uh, more on Halberds and more on Guard mixing up. So certainly not quite as expensive a front line, uh, but quite numerous, to be sure. And a heck of a lot. Well, yeah, as you know, it's expensive. Orc fodder here. Um, and in front of them, some Temple Guard. I'm sure that the Orc fodder will flood in front of the Temple Guard when the time comes to it. Is that where? Nope, that's not where the General is. We've got the Orc Maulers behind them. Armor upgrade for the boys? No, no armor upgrade for the Orc Maulers. Melkor's Chosen, yeah, so as I say, total dominance of, of Cav here. Beasts of Gorgoroth, which is cool to see. Um, far smaller target than the likes of the, um, the I keep wanting to say Oliphant's Mumakil. Yeah, um, I know Oliphant's, you can say that, but I, I like to say Mumakil. Um, oh, General is in with the Melkor's Chosen, quite cool. Um, so not quite as easy to hit with something like a ballista or or the like, but um, yeah, still pretty devastating when they get their uh, when they get their charges laid up. And then the Adunaim Lancers, a unit that again I really do enjoy. Um, let me just, I tend not to go for this kind of higher tier one hit point lancer. I do I I do love the Adunaim Lancers and I do often take them when I'm playing as Mordor, but. Um, as I say, when I take lancers, I tend to take knights or or just very high quality lancers, um, or very cheap lancers. Um, I, I tend to avoid the sort of mid or mid high tier. And we've got a double harad for so. Oh no, no, we don't. No, we certainly don't. I thought that that was. Uh, I thought these two were the same color for a segment. No, we have a full evil roster today. Uh, but we have Harad and Misty. So we got some Southron Warband. Yeah, I mean, their AP will be good for up against the Mornon Infantry, who really start to rely on a little bit of armor uh, that they've got there. More Southron Warband, Black Serpents behind them, Southron Warband again, and also that Halberd line is not going to be quite as effective, especially if we've got Pikes on our side, which Harad certainly do. A lot of Spears. Double Serpent Guard, which, yeah, they're going to have to be careful because there's a lot of melee cav on the field that can easily slice through them. Champions of Nafrat. Along here, Beast Hunters. Or, sorry, yep, yep, double Beast Hunters. Southron Pikes and Dismounted Serpent Guard. We've got some, a lot of phalanxes. Every, every uh, faction's gone for a nice, uh, sturdy central phalanx. But these Pikes are going to outrange those Halberds. They're going to be AP up against that, uh, that Mornon, um, Mornon Plate. Up front, the Haradrim Archers and Haradrim Spears. So I really do like this army for um, for battling up against, King, up against King Rast's force. The only issue I'm seeing, yeah, Black Serpents as well, they are just, they're very swift, high quality Lancers. Two hit point Lancers, of course, but they're not Knights. So 
Yeah, I, I think that the cav, the lack of cav dominance is, is going to be a fear. Uh, beast hunters are going to have to go after those uh, those massive beasts of Gorgoroth. Uh, and then we got, uh, oh, sorry, that was a Commandante Mekrik. And then over here we've got Commandante uh, Naz, Nazrogon. Naz, Nazrogon, sorry, Nazrogon. Uh, oh, oh, lag there. Uh, what was that? Oh, 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 goodness me. What's causing that? Oh, well, anyway. Uh, heavy Goggle Spears here uh, from Nazrogon. Lots of Heavy Goggle infantry, and in the front, all the Halberds. I guess it, that was just the lag spike from all of these massive phalanxes pushing forward. And again, it's a, it's a Heavy Goggle Spear and Heavy Goggle Halberd mixed up. Like, goodness, very, very cool to see. I, I yeah, I, I really like this day. Um, and over here, we've got a lot of Wargs, Bulk's Champions, and double Warg Riders. I love Warg Riders, and uh, they'll, they'll get, like, a cost-effect exchange up against the Warlords of Umbar, but uh, they will lose. Um, and the Bulk's Champions, they are... They're Lancers. I don't believe they have an anti-cavalry bonus. They're just very, very sturdy boys, either way. So, uh, let's get this underway. I'll probably slow down. We're only on 13,000 frames, so this will be quite quick. See, this is interesting. Nazragon's rushing forward, but MSQ, is, he doesn't have any archers. Oh, yeah, okay. Lots of gobble infantry without an armor upgrade. I'm just very surprised. I guess he, he wanted to charge forward anyway, but the thing is, he doesn't... Oh, and Berserkers there popping up. More gobble infantry. Yeah, I'm going to have to slow down immediately, actually. Um, I don't think I would have wanted to charge here because you've got crossbows. Your enemy doesn't have any ranged... Now, he's probably not been able to take as close a look as, as what we did, of course. So he maybe, he intended to charge forward anyway. It was probably a safe bet to assume that uh, Umbar would have a more balanced force. So he would have wanted to charge in. But, um, yeah, you know, they've got their likes of the Corsair crossbows. They, do, they can put out a lot of range power when they want to. I think the wargs are just going to ward off this, uh, this cavalry force. I think MSQ is going to get caught a little bit out of position, maybe. Well, I mean, right now, um, Nazragon is very out of position. So if I was MSQ, I'd be tempted to just try and do a shunt now. And so get all of these guys on the flank. And Nazragon is is, is going to get caught out, I think. Um, Misty Mountain Berserkers here. Or, uh, or some, some Mountain Orc Berserkers clashing into the Belgar Footmen. As much as I like the Belgar Footmen, yet this is going to be a bit beyond their abilities. Um, Bulls Champions coming around. Berserker's going to be getting charged by the uh, the Warlords of Umbar. I'm looking at the mini-map over there. It doesn't look like we've got a crack clash just yet, but it will be coming. We'll have to turn my focus over there. 120 down to... 1... Oh, 19, 98. Oh, wow, that was a good charge. Ouch. Over here, we've got the Wargs clashing with the Alcronus Faithful. As I say, this is a this is a fight that the Wargs are going to lose quite, uh, you know, quite handedly, but, the, um, but they'll deal some damage to the Alcarandas Faithful, and they should hopefully hold the Alcarandas Faithful for a little while. The Wargs are, uh, they do take a little while to die. And over here, this is a bit nicer for the Wargs, actually catching the Warlords of Umbar. Goodness, right, okay, so we will we will come back to that in a second. Temple Inquisitors pushing forward, trying to charge down the Haradrim Spears. I guess he's realized he does, you know, he, yeah, well, he was going for the archers, just chasing them back. I don't, he maybe didn't even have a real intention. Wow! What is causing all these little lag spikes? Huh. Very strange. Let's go to 0 0.6. See if that just smooths it out for a little minute. Um, maybe he just went to push back the archers. Maybe he didn't actually have any intention of making contact there. But he probably does feel very confident in his cav power. <sighs> Infantry are out just in front of the spears. Oh, you see, I would have been tempted to take that charge. I think it's going to be so tough for you to pull off like any decent charges here. And I know you would have been caught by the Inquisitors, but... Ah, uh, maybe, maybe I'm just taking too much risk. So they're about to have a clash, but uh, we'll, we'll zoom back over to uh, this position here. Goodness me. Yeah, so I think that this is not going the way that Naz... Lord, oh. protect us. Our general lies okay. upon the battlefield. That's a nice little win. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely a cool little win for... Oh, snow trolls coming in. They can hide, of course. Um, and goodness me, yeah, that's not fun for the, uh, for the Umbar Cav. Okay, right, Nazrigon. Um, this is going slightly better than I thought it would. Misty kind of showing that, yeah, look, you know, they've got the numbers over here. These guys are locked morale. They ain't going anywhere. 
pretty sturdy armor. Well, pretty cost-effective armor, I'll say, for the um, for the gobos. So they'll be able to withstand a bit of that pike damage for a while. Shaking Belagar in uh, pikes, and this is more halberds coming forward now. A lot of AP from Nazrigon's actual front line over here. Black Serpents, yeah, you see, this may be what I would do if I was Mikrik. Um, like, it's it's tough to coordinate this, but I do not see really... Uh, I don't see him being able to really effectively use his cab over here, so I'd be tempted to sort of gather all my cab and rush over uh, to, to Billy Umbar. Um, but then, of course, King Rast will just send all of his melee cab over there. So, hard to say. Uh, Black Serpent's coming in for a quick little backstab there, which might be what it takes to break these guys. They're shaking. Halberds, Halberds sort of managing to... No, I thought the Halberds were turning around there. Quick little strike. We won't think it was as devastating, anywhere near as devastating as I thought it would be. Yeah, and we've actually lost quite a few of the Black Serpents there. That didn't turn out too great. But as for the actual front line, this seems to be very much going in favour of Murad. I thought it would... That skill, the Dismounted Serpent Guard, really comfortable beating the uh, the Uryx off the Moranon forces. Champions of Naf right here, going toe-toe -to with the Halberds and Infantry, not caring that they're being outranged. They are the Champions of Naf right? they're happy enough, and they're getting a little bit of help from the Serpent Guard. I'm actually quite surprised with how, um, basically, to see these Serpent Guards still alive. <laughs> I, I expected them to sort of be down by now. Uh, but it looks like the Dunaim Lancers have been caught up here in all of this mess. Just swinging their swords around. And uh, trying to do what damage they can. But the Southron Warband are there getting through their armor. And Orc Fodder here going toe to toe with the Southron Warband. The Southron Warband will, yeah, as I say, easily win that. But it's, um. I mean, I guess, slow going just because of the numbers of the Orc Fodder. And I'm sure we would have wanted to have these Southron Warband flanking around or, or, or tending something more central in the fight. Seeing the beasts arriving now, shunting around the, uh, the cab of the Serpent Guard and barreling right through the front lines. That's quite a nice shot. Don't see... Oh, <laughs> we won't... Uh, yeah, hey, it's a bit of a spoiler if, he, if I show that image. But, um, yeah, I, I like these guys do prefer do perform this one. But come, but come, that's what I'm looking for. Um, this sort of blocker on the battlefield after they go down. All the while, they're throwing out those pretty high damage javelins or whatever is nearby them. Oh, the Beast Hunters are already in melee with their little maces. Where's this going? Boy, wow, okay, that's a bit scary. That is a bit scary, isn't it? Um, and this beefy gobo line, that's a... That's an unfortunate break for the stubborn men of Umbar. Very, very unfortunate break. You won't have to worry about the oil front. That's Legion breaking, but that was over 100. I'm surprised how... I'm surprised at how many men they got away with there, though. They should return with that, with those sorts of numbers. They really should return to the fight unless they get caught. This be if you had a unit of sermon guard here. intervention more. by but, the Almighty uh, Lord or a military ooh, genius can bring us victory does not from care for Umbar's chances right now. Sentinels is trying their best to hold back this line, but it's a lot of AP in front of them, and it's just numbers. You're seeing how many they have actually gutted. The the Sentinels are absolutely incredible. It seems the only place that he's really got a dominance, though, is his far sort of left flank. And he really has got some control here, so... Oh, no, maybe not. I didn't Lord see these Berserkers. I was looking in front of, of them, but of course the Berserkers are behind them. Uh, so, they should beat them with the Pikes, the Dunaim Shield Guard. But it's going to be a... It's going to be slow going. That's still a very full unit, and they're going to suffer a lot of casualties for it. There we go. Good stuff. I didn't think about that. Snow Trolls still trying to just chase down the Warlords of Umbar, but they are horses at the end of the day. This brave uh, shield, for well, this brave Legionnaire, going to get some backup maybe. Oh, dealt a good damage, bit of damage with that charge, but that went down from, let's say, 55 down to 42, 41 after that charge. Very unpleasant. Trolls are, oh, no, continue that charge, dude. You need to, you need to shut down that cat. Definitely need that cap shut down. Boys are celebrating, maybe a little bit uh, preemptive. Um, you know, we're seeing what's going on over there. Um, sorry that I'm having to say at 0.6, but we are just, we're going to miss something if I try and move a bit faster than that. We've already missed a lot of this uh, frontline battle here from the uh, from the Uryx, who have mostly been falling back, it seems. Coming back from routing, that's sort of what you always get from the, uh, the Orcs. They are more likely to route, but uh, because they usually Praise will be routing early, 
Our men okay, have slain that's the, the enemy uh, Bolts general. champion general uh, fall in there. A uh, Bolts champions, yeah. Bolg, Bolg. Yep, uh, so because the Uruks are routing with sort of much higher numbers, they are going to be coming back more often. Usually when you've got, say, a Western Kingdom of Man or, or Lord Fred and the Elf, when they route, they're gone because they're routing with, like, ten guys left. Uh, but you, you'll usually see the Orcs come back. And it's it's I've seen battles getting, getting won because... Uh, players have just been able to carefully manage their returning forces instead of just shunting them into the first thing you see. One Lancer left. Very cool. Um, he needs to be getting his Lance down, but that's a lot of micro for one unit. And King Rast has got a lot to deal with. That's another the general there. Jeep sake, there's dead. only one general he left on the field the now. And Harad is not... You know, they're, they're an evil man faction, and they're, they're an evil man faction that isn't Rudauer. So their morale is not incredible, but I think... By the looks of things, their troops are still pretty stubborn here. They, they've got their numbers. And if these uh, these Melkor's Chosen cannot really rinse down um, a lot of the remaining forces. Coming for a charge against the Haradrim Archers, we get a point blank volley into these guys. We are, but they are very heavily armored and shielded. Ain't going to be too much of, a, much of a problem for the Melkor's Chosen. Uh, 165. We'll just see this charge here before we zoom back to the other side. Um, not being Lancers, but just being very high damage uh, melee cav, they are, they're gonna really rinse these boys. Um, not actually. Sorry if I'm ever pausing, it just means I'm taking a gulp of tea down. I want to, uh, while I'm at home right now, during the, during the Christmas, I want to see Christmas holidays, as I say, this is just the time off I've taken around Christmas. Um, I'm gonna be doing my best to just record as much as humanly possible, which is of course Only killing my voice, so I need to occasionally Lord, pause to down some, uh, <laughs> down some water or tea, or, or beer when I'm recording a bit later on in the day. And then finally, of course, uh, when it comes down to the, uh, the end of year, uh, New Year's battle, I'll be, um, when I record that, I'll be, of course, drinking wine, or maybe, maybe for a second, we'll see if I, if I treat myself. Um, but yeah. Snow Trolls coming in here. Not anything to really counter them. I'm kind of surprised how, how long those Snow Trolls have, uh, have remained alive. They've done not too bad. They're quite a high quality troll, but they're nowhere near as well armored as the likes of the Olokai or, uh, you know, the Trolls of the White Hand. They are, or even the, the Angram armored trolls. But they are, they're still pretty brutal. They certainly are. And uh, the Alcoronis Legion are maybe lacking the, the real damage to cut into them. The crosswoman here still standing. They need to just be on fire at well at this point. Um, just blast, you know, because they're just not shooting as much. Um, and we need to get their uh, their bolts rattled out. It looks like MSQ2 has managed to... You know, he, he held his cool, which is something you'd expect from MSQ2. He's, uh, he's been around for a good long while. So... One... Oh, it's not even a Lancer, unfortunately. It's just one of the, uh, it's one of the captains of the unit. But still, you can shunt his warg into the back of these Alcra and that's Legion. Um, I like this sort of little blob of, uh, of gobble fighters that, uh, that have still survived. And the, uh, the Umbar men bloody. are going to try their they best to sort of flank around them in places. Sort of really pike them down uh, as best they can. And so I, I think it's, it's going to be bloody, but my assumption is Umbar is going to win over there. So can Mordor bleed the Southrons enough? That's the, that's sort of the question. And I think if he gets a few more charges, like... Oh! I would have gone for the Serpent's Fangs. I think maybe King Rasta's... Uh, oh, wait, okay, 104. Surely that wasn't... Uh, oh, wow! Okay. That wasn't bad, but I'm sure that we could have gotten a better charge off than that. Uh, keep in mind, Serpent's Fangs, they are quite high quality... They are a very high quality yeah. unit there. Um... So dropping a few of them is, is very impressive. They're taking their bows out now. See, so with them taking their bows out, I'd be tempted to turn around immediately and come back at them. Because they're not going to be able to get a counterattack on me. I know we're carrying the charge on through, but maybe we can get a little ping pong situation going on here. Ooh, ow, ow, ow. Little counter charge there. The and the pikes remain. are running one in. Been taking out pike formation, just trying to reach them in time. Nice, nice. Yeah, so this is going to be a lot more brutal this time. And we're 80 for 58. Goodness me, we are down. But 
If we can get some more uh, action like this, that was 93 before the charge, down to 70, 75. Very nice. And those Milko's Chosen are still 16 of them. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> it really is a lot of these uh, these nasty creatures. Shadow Bulls running off. Oh! I always thought Shadow Bulls were locked morale for some reason. Might have been, maybe Camel's Shadow Bulls are locked morale. And that's why I get uh, a bit perplexed. Let's go to a zero. Oh, uh, let's stick at 0 0.9 for now. Just, just so I'm slightly slower than, uh, than real time. No excuse for missing something. Halberd's there. Oh, no, 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 that hurts. That was 190 halberds there. That was 190, like 194 halberds there that just broke. That is a stinger. And that's, of course, going to make these guys break very soon. That is a mass rout of the Gobo forces. That's it gone. Okay, I'm glad we saw that. Because I would have looked over here and wondered. Yep, yeah, that's everything. Everything that uh, that Nazgaron had there, or sorry, Naz uh, Nazrak, yeah, Nazragon, uh had there is is routing. That is that is traumatizing. Um, we need the cav over here, whatever cavalry we have, because we we need to chase these guys down because they will return. These guys suffered. I mean, even even if they return, that's uh, that's a massive amount of of guys that have just been captured for nothing. Alcron and Faithful are here. We need to get those Warlords of Umbar. I know that they're just wanting to fight down the crossbows. Good. Yeah, just... Just nom 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 there. I, I would still bring... Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'd regret that. Even one crossbow volley is, is a bit of a shame to take. And the rest of his force is just chasing that down. So that is nice. And you can see the balance of power has just jumped because of that route. Something I'm sure Nazragon is just begging for something to come back from routing because that is uh Oh that hurts. How are those crossbows doing? They they've just routed too. Oh my goodness me, that just went from very nice in the uh the Northern Alliance. Yeah, they started up there. Um they very much in their favour. Yeah, right, so Mikrik, he is just a bit concerned with the um Melkor's chosen. I love this little formation. Um it does look quite nice, but it's just to try and avoid any hits from the um, from the Melkor's Chosen. Temple Guard there receiving a charge from the one remaining Blank Serpent, who did re really pierce through them. But they seem to be ignoring him, the Halberd's trying to chase him down. But Black Serpents are quick, and he is still just warmed up. He is going to be able to outpace those uh, those Halberds very comfortably, especially just being a one-man unit. He can just, dip, 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 just zip up around, easy. Um, that, was, that was three guys down in that charge. That was three two hit point units down in that charge. Very impressive, uh, Mr. Mr. Black Serpent Man. Um, where are the Melkor's Chosen? Did they already die? We're seeing a we're seeing a few of the casualties around, but I thought we still would have had a few left. Um, anything over this way? No, I think I think the Melkor's Chosen are finished. Yeah, I think that this is all that uh, that King Rasta has left. So he's just going to continue to rattle in with his uh, his armor-piercing fire, just keeping those halberds nearby to stop him getting bullied by the, the remaining Black Serpent. Um, you'd maybe want to sort of gather your boys up and give them a charge. Like, the only reason he's in this position is, or this in this formation, is because he's worried about Cav. I don't see the Cav he's worried about. I really would want to get on top of those Temple Guard and stop him from just... Uh, rattling these shots at me and I'd also would very much want them defeated before the Umbar forces arrive. MSQ2 taking his time coming over, which I think is smart. It's uh, there would there's an argument to basically just gather your boys up and run, but I don't think it's a good one. I think you're better off just taking your time in this case. Ah, okay, there is some Elko shoes. I like that actually. Yeah, King Rasta sent his cav over here just to try and chase down a few of the, the goblins. I definitely the think that's a good shout. The and that's Run them. Down those worthless that is that is the last of the gobos. These guys did return from routing, but their morale, once you start routing, your morale is already pretty short, so you're you're gonna be a goner pretty quick. So we're chasing them down again with the Melkor's Chosen. It's possible that in the heat of the moment, we've not heard the announcer there. Um, or we're just a bit... I think because once that announcement goes, like that's the entire army routing. And 
once your entire army is, is routed, you can't bring any back, right? I think they can only return to the fight as long, for as long as you've got something that isn't routed. Maybe I'm wrong in that. Either way, it's pretty safe to just snag them, and we're not we're not doing anything until the uh, until the Umbar forces arrive. So, gotta watch out because those pikes, because of that pike animation of movement, they are they are outpacing the rest of the army. Who are the? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, why didn't I think of that? Just just <laughs> King Rasta, just get get your butt over here. Uh, no need to. I'm sure Mick, I would have wanted to rush them down. I definitely would have wanted to chase him down, but I, I know why he didn't, but yeah. This is still pretty damn even. The balance of power is pretty much just bang on there. We're, we're down percentage points. We're down about 8%, which is not good because most of the percentage killed has been those little gobbles. Um, these Southron pikes, that's a big unit of pikes. That's another massive unit of pikes there for this late stage of the game. That's, that's two basically full units of pikes. Southron Warband, that's AP. More Southron Warband, more AP. Serpent's Fangs. Armor upgraded, dismounted Serpent Guard. A lot of them there too. Armor piercing Macemen. It's... I mean, what do we have against them? Belagar Pikes. I'm sorry, boys. I love you to pieces, but those Southron Pikes are going to have you beat just from that AP. Alcarondas Legion. Pretty solid, but the amount of um, dismounted Servant Guard they've got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with is going to be too much for them. A lot of footmen, again, I love them to pieces, but those Southron, uh, Southron Warband are going to be too much with their AP. There is more Alcarondas Legion. I mean, the the only strategy that uh, that the Southern Alliance has here, the blue guys, um, is is, got, is going to be to use their calf. They've got to they've got to find a way to bust open this formation and and keep all of these spearmen and and you know keep all of the spearmen and pikes busy which with this amount of infantry i just don't see how he can do albert's coming on over to lend a hand there a little bit of a phalanx is, uh, is is good temple guard running on over as well we don't really know how much ammunition oh dear they might be out of ammo yeah yeah i think they're probably out of ammo actually with how much they've been shooting so but so that's that's not pleasant to deal with and we don't have apart from the serpent fangs but even them like they're not they can't really go toe to toe with the temple guard so we're making contact here really just at the at the corner of the triangle trying to uh trying to break on through Alcarondas legion gonna be going down to the last man of course whoa good little charge attack there brought down quite a few of the hunters and the rest of the forces arriving now. Really just MSQ2 trying to concentrate his forces. Haradra Marchers flanking around now to get that side shot on. Cav coming. Warlords. Melkor's chosen. Randas Faithful. I just don't... I don't see us getting, getting a spot opened up. But yeah, I, I like this. It's He's just concentrated his forces in together so that uh, Mikvik has two choices. Either I sit and I hold, where I am being overwhelmed, very, very brutally overwhelmed, or I open up my triangle and I surround him. I use my numbers. Now, the problem is if, if he does that, then he's opening himself up to cavalry, which is exactly what the, uh, the southern boys want here. They want him to surround this force, because, wow, it's, it's crushing them. It is crushing them. Holy smokes. I'm, I mean, I love Umbar, but they are really showing themselves as the... Uh, as the kings of the evil men factions here, um, as they just sort of rattle through the Haradrim. Quick little charge here could be could be nice up against the those dismounted servant guard could break them, but uh, looks like we're wanting to save them for something better. Holy smokes, this is just going way better than I thought it would for the uh, for the Umbar forces. Really blobbing up together, just showing the yeah a few a few halberds in there too. I'm on Southrop Pikes. Southron Warbander in there. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're having to send more and more stuff over those dismounted servant guard. Um, and we're finally this last unit of pikes has come on in, but the problem with that is now uh, Triangle is fully dismantled. And it is just this messy, messy grind. And to be honest, it's a messy grind that, that even the the Umbar forces are, are doing very well in. Doing surprisingly well. What is causing this? 
The Sentinels there just getting their constant jabs in? I don't really know. Okay, now it's going in favour of the Hradrim. But that's only because they brought everything forward, which was the goal. And, uh, and now the Cav can be uh, can be sent on in. Serpent's Fang slicing down a few. Killing that general could be nice, but the Temple Guard ain't going anywhere and there's more on it. More on Halberds are not really enough. More Serpent Guard routing off. Radra Marchers need to be just targeting down Cav. If the fight was just in a vacuum, then I'd still... I don't know if I'd have my money on the Haradrim, but I'd be... From such I'd still be leaning towards them. Emerge. Oh dear, that's a nasty break. But this fight is not in a vacuum. We have Cav around. And at this point, I'd maybe be tempted to... Oh, no, okay, they turned around, they turned around. I was going to say I would be tempted to strike that. But no, he's going for the Serpent's Fine. Somebody's going to mess and go into the pikes. Sorry, dude, RIP. Somebody had to do it. <laughs> but the Serpent's Fangs are gone. Um, one, maybe two Warlords for the all of those remaining Serpent's Fangs is a, is a worthy sacrifice. Building those pikes off the front line, chase down the Warlords, has just caused a break. I, I know why he did it. He sort of had to do it, arguably. Holy smokes. I did not see that coming. I really underestimated the uh, the power of the Umbar forces there. And of course, the, the Temple Guard just mixing it up and those those uh, halberds their, their helpfulness cannot be um, yeah you can't kind of forget that but it's um, that was something that was really something and that was uh, that was I really don't think that there was like major missteps from Mitric, Mitric there I, uh, I I think I would have done mostly the, the same thing um, and uh, it's had the same result so how many prisoners did we get Freaking heck from MSQ, very nice. I think that yeah, what the that battle was was just lost for the Northern Boys um, because of that mass mass route. That was absolutely astounding there. Of course, they're gobbles. It is what it is. Until we get the troll drummers fixed, uh, that's something we're gonna suffer from with gobbles. But it's oh jeez, that's uh, that was something. Um, Let's see, I'll run this legion, that's where he had his general in, cool. Um, nice. Over there, means your general isn't gonna write off. Uh, Warlord's very good, Alcaron is faithful, nice. Wow! I guess, yeah, I mean, it just shows, like, the Alcaron is like, when you have, like, a, a high-quality sword and board up against heaps and heaps and heaps of low-quality sword and board, you're just gonna gut them. Those pikes, oh, yes. That's what we're talking about from the boys. That's what we like to see. Three, three experience earned by the Naranara Sentinels. 435 kills very nice um cool cool no that was actually a really fun one uh for, for as far as grassy plains go i i really enjoyed that so um i didn't expect it i really didn't expect it. i thought we were um even after the even after the mass route of gobbles i was i was still thinking it would be a northern victory and i think that, that came down pretty close so thank you guys very much and i will see you later